Hello YouTube, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome back to another review. This is a uh, 1980s uh, comedy uh, drama biopic, if you will, of a uh, film done by Martin Scorsese, and this is one of the few PG movies he did. This is not R, so there's no F-bombs in this movie. It's pretty safe. There's a couple of curse words, but it's not too much. And it's from 1983, and it is The King of Comedy, starring... The late, great Jerry Lewis, may rest in peace, and Robert De Niro. Yeah, this is when he was in his prime and he was doing good films. And yeah, this movie is really good. I saw this movie a few weeks ago before Christmas, and I'm like, wow, they don't make movies like this anymore. Because uh, this movie follows the life of Jerry Lewis, who basically playing a version of himself. His name, his name is uh, Jerry Langford, and he hosts this TV show that you know gets a lot of views and... People were following him, and they want to get his autograph, and Robert De Niro wants to be on his show. So, basically, he tries to talk to Jerry and say that, you know, I have all this material. I want to be on your show and make people laugh and, you know, maybe earn a living out of it. And, you know, uh, Robert De Niro, his performance, these two men, their performances are great. Like, Jerry Lewis, I miss him. He could do comedies, but he could also do dramatic stuff. And he was, you know, granted he had an ego, like, like and this movie is living proof of it, but... It's, you know, it's, it was, his talent was on display. De Niro, his performance is really good. It's intense. It's passionate. It's well delivered. The lines and the writing and directing is there because he worked with Scorsese many times. Paul, Paul, Paul D. Zimmerman did their script and it's well done. The film looks great. It's in New York City, of course, where uh, I live. So that's uh, a huge plus for the movie. Uh, the, the way that they use the camera when he's on, uh, Jerry Lewis is on camera, it looks like the old school film cameras of the 1960s and the 70s when they used to capture, you know, uh, or in the early 80s when they used to capture people on uh, film and not digital. And it looks grainy and it looks great. I love the way it looks. I mean, this is the Blu-ray. It says HD DVD, but no, it's a Blu-ray. See? It's a Blu-ray. But I put, it's the same thing pretty much, you know, just a different box color. But anyway, yeah, the film is really good. I, I have some issues with the film. It's a little long. It's not two hours. It's an hour and 49 minutes. You easily could have cut that to an hour and 35. This woman is the reason why. Sandra Bernhard. Uh, um, Sandra Ber Berhard, Bernhard. She's not needed in the movie. She's very annoying. She's clingy. Like some people on Facebook. Winkity wink wink. And she's, like, very obnoxious and loud, and she's following Jerry, and she's trying to stalk him. I hated that. I don't. I didn't find that funny. She could be good in some movies here. She. I just, I, I couldn't stand her. I wish she just left the movie. She has no purpose in it. There's a scene where she strips, and she wants to, like, do Jerry, and I'm like, it's kind of uncomfortable to watch. I know that's the point, but you could have cut her out. You didn't need a female lead in this movie. She's just useless. The black woman in this movie, I, I forgot her name, uh... Diane Abbott, she actually was married to De Niro at this time. She's good in the film. She serves a purpose. And uh, like I said, but the movie is a little long. You could have cut Sandra Bernhard. Oh, but what, what about the conflict? Well, spoiler, this is going to have a few spoilers. Uh, Jerry doesn't live up to his promise to Robert De Niro. He's like, no, I'm not going to put you on the show. He gets on the show once and he says, you're weak. You're not ready for the big time. And Robert has to take drastic measures, so he abducts Jerry Lewis or Jerry Langford and in, 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 if you will and uh, it's but it's interesting like he's not he doesn't want to kill him he just wants to hold him up for ransom so he could be on the show and then just go on with his life and I get it I mean you look at the picture right here where he puts a gun at him he's like he calls the studio and tells them I want to be on the show right now no scripts just let me put my material out there and make people laugh and then you can have him back and it's interesting the way Scorsese directs these people and you know it's just very intriguing and uh, for the most part except for Sandra Bernhard like I said she's annoying and uh yeah it just it, it I love the art of filming you know with movie a movie or a tv show within a movie the pr tv production and film production that interests me because I've done it in college so I know exactly what it's like I've done t a tv production class once for one semester so I know what it's like to be behind the scenes uh, of, a, of a TV production. And it interests me. And the film, like I said, it's held up very well. It's, 20, it's 35 years old. And, you know, if you want to see something good with De Niro, that's not just another gangster movie or 
some of his shitty comedies from recently. See this. This is well made. I got the short buck. It was worth it. Uh, I think the film the film is fantastic. It's a good movie. It really is. It deserves all the praise it got. It did not deserve to flop. It should have made money. How does the Hangover sequels make money and this didn't? I guess because bad timing, I guess. But anyway, um, if uh, Tony Randall's in the movie playing himself. He gets on the show and he, he tells a few jokes. And uh, like I said, it's it's a, it's an art form. Like, you know, Scorsese knows what he's doing. This is not some cheap-ass director that does a lot of bad CG-filled special effects trope. This is tri uh, tripe. This is a guy that knows what he's doing. Like, a lot of his films are considered some of the greatest of all time. And uh, he does not He does know how to hold the camera. He knows how to direct actors. He, he knows how to use a, uh, a premise that works and it grabs your interests. And, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the film has a good soundtrack, a good score. It's shot beautifully for the time. And, uh, you know, it has a lot of uh, old school things that I miss from the 80s. But, like I said before, I don't care for Sandra Bernhardt. I think she's not funny in the movie. Someone clingy and stalky is not funny. It's creepy, and this is not a horror movie. So, there's that. But anyway, see this movie. If you've never heard of The King of Comedy, it's the 80s version with Robert De Niro and Jerry Lewis. Not the Kings of Comedy with uh, Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey. No, that's a stand-up. This is the feature film. So, just to let you know. And it's worth it. If you find this at a dollar store, buy it. It's really well done. It's worth a watch at least once, and... Yeah, like I said, the intriguing premise and the ending, it's a little bittersweet, but I don't want to spoil it because then, you know, you're going to be like, oh, you spoiled the whole thing. No, it's really well done. And it's less depressing than you think. And neither one of these guys die, so that's what I'm going to say. But this is a good movie. If you've never seen it. It's an early 80s film. I'm glad I finally watched this year. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. I think that glare is coming from my light. But anyway, I'll see you guys soon, hopefully in the new year. And uh, more reviews in 2019 to come. So see you later, guys.